Yo, what's going on guys? Mush back at it with another video here to talk about the game that is the talk of the town these days and that is Helldivers 2. This is a game that I was very much looking forward to leading into its release and man oh man has this been a colossal release for one Sony PlayStation on PC as well. And there's a lot to dissect when you talk about the success of this game. Now not to say that this game is the biggest Steam release of all time. We just had Pal World a couple weeks ago so I feel like the perception of games as far as scale and how big they are is a little warped just because the gravitas of a release such as Pal World and the heights that game reach Helldivers 2 isn't there but Helldivers 2 is doing very remarkable numbers given the anticipation towards this game a month or so ago was nowhere near at the level that I thought it should have been frankly I've been talking about the lack of hype and anticipation for Helldivers 2 going back to June of last year but word of mouth and the promotion for this game for the last week leading into the release was incredibly strong and I started picking up around Monday to Tuesday uh, ahead of the game's release that I was like, okay, starting to feel it with Helldivers 2. This is going to be a pretty big release, but I didn't think it was going to be this big where the game is now peaking at over 200,000 players on Steam. An incredibly successful number. Guys, to go over some numbers of recent games, Persona 3 Reload peaked at 45,000 concurrent Steam players. Uh, like a Dragon an infinite wealth 45,000 concurrent steam players grand blue fantasy relink a multiplayer focused title 110,000 ish players those are major big releases albeit those games, 7 years, 60 bucks. Helldivers 2 being $40, I think it was uh, putting the game at a very advantageous position. Green Man Gaming has it a little bit cheaper if you want to get it there, but I digress. I think the route that some of these games are going where they're being $30 to $40 creates a very compelling option and an attractive option. Now, Helldivers 2 also does have microtransactions, although I think those microtransactions are done very, very well, and they're not egregious by any stretch of the imagination. But what I'm saying is the game's good. It's been received really well outside of the server issues, and especially last Sunday, those server issues were really, really bad, but thankfully, it's gotten a lot better. They're continuing to update the game, continue to work on fixes. We just had a new event drop in the Defend event against the Automatons, and the game has just been a lot of fun. I'm not here to dissect the game and the gameplay or anything like that. It's really a larger and broader topic that we gotta talk about. This is a PlayStation published title. Helldivers 2, it's not really being promoted as such. Arrowhead is not owned by PlayStation, so it's not not a first party release but this is very much a title that sony funded and sony published if you go on the steam page playstation pc as the publisher and look at the success level of the game I think a big reason for that, and Sony needs to study this, is the fact that this game got a PC release. Now, Helldivers 2 is exactly the kind of game that Sony's going to be looking at and be like, yeah, this game is perfect for a PC release. Uh, it's a multiplayer-focused title. It's a live service game. We're going to drop it on PC day one. I expect that to be the case with games such as Fair Game and Concord, and we knew that Sony had gotten this uh, live service wind and they want to do more live service games live service as a term really does elicit a lot of fear in the hearts of gamers but live service can be done well and Helldivers 2 is a case study at least up until this point and we're in week one week one and a half so to speak of Helldivers 2 it really is the long game when we talk about live service title month six month 12 what are you doing for me at that point? But Helldivers 2 is looking to be a game that's going to be a very big positive for Sony in terms of their live service endeavor. Now you look at something like A Last of Us Factions that they poured millions of dollars into and will never see the light of day. Yeah, it's also been a bit, uh, it's been a bit of a fumble. But I also offer you guys a little bit of thought. And it's a discussion that I think Sony is probably going to be having here very shortly is that I don't think live service games should be the only day one PlayStation PC titles. I think the game needs to change given the success level for Helldivers 2. And ultimately, let's just say Helldivers 2 was released on PlayStation as a exclusive, a true exclusive, not on PC. I still think the game would have done well, but it would be nowhere near the level that it is at now, guys. And I don't think this thought should only be exclusive to live service games that we can get these bigger game releases. Because yes, while PlayStation is releasing their single-player first-party exclusives and single-player exclusives in general on PC... 
You look at a Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, $60 for a game two years after its initial release. No buys. Like, that's just not gonna inspire a lot of interest. I'm sorry, and I love Ratchet and Clank. Ratchet and Clank is literally a franchise that I grew up with, but the novelty has worn off to an extent. To an extent. God of War Ragnarok, when it drops on PC, gonna do very well. Horizon Forbidden West, it's gonna do well. But I just offer you guys, let's think a little bit here. These PlayStation titles would do so much better on PC if they dropped day and day on Steam, and you don't have to drop them into a subscription service like Microsoft does. I'm telling you, right now, the next Horizon game, the next Spider-Man game, drop that day one on PC at $70, and look at those sales numbers, because ultimately, I know what Sony is thinking. They want to keep these single-player titles as a gated, timed exclusive on PlayStation 5 for a while, because they still want people in that walled community of PlayStation. That means buying more games on PlayStation. That means selling you PlayStation Plus subscriptions. I get why they want to do what they're doing right now. However, I ultimately think that there is... Yes, a small crossover between the PC community and the PlayStation community. But by and large, these communities are more separated than I think people realize. I think there's the people that are going to play on PlayStation, and then there's the people that are going to play on PC, and then there's a small overlap, a small overlap. And what happens when you release these games on delay on PC? Great to see a Forbidden West on PC. Great to see a God of War on PC. But you're not maximizing the potential sales numbers. And I think you got to do the trade off at this point think about it this way is stellar blade really selling people on playstation 5s i know the girl's attractive guys but are people dropping 500 dollars to play stellar blade on playstation 5 i just don't think so i don't think that's the case i think that's a game that hey i have a playstation 5 game looks cool main character looks cool i'm gonna spend 70 dollars on it i think that's what it is and i think you could get a lot more revenue by just releasing that a game like that on PC. And if it is a game that if people are going to look at it and be like, wow, that's such a cool game, they'll buy their PlayStation 5 because they're a console player, and then they'll get Stellar Blade as well, and then they'll buy a bunch of other games. But by and large, I truly believe that console owners play on consoles because they like to play on consoles. It's not usually because, oh my god, dude, Horizon looks so good. X game, Y game looks so good. Yeah, there's a little bit of that, but I do think it's more so that, hey, I play on consoles, it's got all these great games, if those great games existed on PC because PlayStation, by and large, has won the console war against Xbox, let's be honest here, and I don't think anything's changing that, if those games existed on PC, the only shift that I think will happen is Sony's making more money and those games will inherently have more interest because what has happened with Helldivers 2? Word of mouth has been so strong with this game because let's be honest, Sony did a poor job of promoting this game. That word of mouth is not only true for multiplayer games, it's not exclusive to that. Stellar Blade, if it pops off and people start talking about it, oh, that word of mouth is going to resonate on a single player game as well. Rise of the Ronin. I know Team Ninja does a lot of garbage PC versions, but if they did a good version with Rise of the Ronin, same thing there. Spider-Man 2 wouldn't need the word of mouth, but guess what? That drops day one on PC. There's another million and a half copies that you just sold on day one. You do some math. Oh, that's like $150 million worth of revenue going into your pockets. Now, I know Steam takes a cut and whatnot, but you get the idea. 150 mil is actually a little bit of a stretch. It would be seven. If it's one, it's, if it's a million and a half, it would be 70. It'd be $105 million. It's a lot of money, and a million and a half copies, I think, is putting it lightly. I think Spider Man 2 dropped day one on PC. Given that that game sold 3 million copies on PlayStation 5 in the, in the small window, I think it can sell 2 million, 3 million copies easily on PC. I think there's a large audience on PC that wants to play these games, but when you're talking about a Spider-Man 2018 coming out four years later after its initial release and it being $60 for a dated release, I think that's a little bit of a hard sell. But a day one release, $70, I think people would be excited. I think people would buy the game. I think they would do very, very well. And it's all digital sales, and I know they probably irk at the thought of giving that 30% to Valve or whatever percentage it is, and Valve does not care uh whether or not any game is on pc we've seen that but i think for sony it could be a great revenue stream for them and i think how divers 2 proves that and ultimately what i think it does is increases the visibility of the game and is a net positive for place i think if the games come out on pc 
in a weird way, it would also benefit the PlayStation sales of that game because, again, there's this audience of people that only want to play it on PlayStation. Let's just say a game like Stellar Blade comes out and suddenly this PC audience is playing the game. They're talking about the game on social media. They're feeding that monster of this game from a promotional standpoint. And word of mouth, I've said it over and over again, beyond a shadow of the doubt, is the most powerful promotional vehicle that is available in gaming today. It ain't your $200 million marketing budgets. It ain't, you know, paying Twitch streamers. It's not that anymore. It's word of mouth, friends talking to friends being like, hey, you gotta check out this game. Hey, you gotta check out that game. So on and so forth. And I do think it's more effective when you talk about a multiplayer game. Certainly, because Helldivers 2, you want all your boys to play with you, etc, etc. But I think it could be effective with single player games as well. I really think Sony should be moving towards this model, and I think they ultimately will be. Based on what Hiroki Totoki has said uh, in that press release, in that press conference, I should say, uh, the earnings call, I believe it was, in that they want to get more aggressive with PC releases. And given that these games are so much more expensive to develop for now, you got to get these games and software sales up. You got to be selling these games to as many people as possible to make a return on your investment. Because yes, while well, Last of Us won an abomination port, but that game didn't crush numbers, you're talking about, like, bro... Yes, God of War is great to have on PC, but four years after the fact, five years after the fact, you gotta do quicker turnarounds or you gotta do day and data. And I think that'll ultimately benefit you, and it'll benefit PlayStation as well. You won the console war. Console is what it is. You get this increased residual revenue stream by releasing the game on PC as well. That's my two cents. I think it should happen. I understand the lens of Sony. I try to come at things from the lens of Sony and the consumer lens, and sometimes I muddle the two, and you guys don't know where I'm coming from, but, uh... In this sense, it's both. I think it's a benefit for Sony. I think it's a benefit for the consumer. Just do it. It's got to happen at some point. And I think sooner rather than later, it will happen as PC gaming as a whole is just growing and growing. I understand having console exclusives, but let's try these games on PC as soon as we can. Can we do that? Because uh, I think there's an audience on PC that's just always going to be on PC. You ain't tearing them away. Um, you might tear a few into buying the console, but guess what? You ultimately want them to buy the console so you can sell them a bunch of games on that console and sell them some subscription service and so on and so forth yeah they might buy a console for one or two games and that's a few that's a small portion in my opinion but then you, you sell them the, those one or two games and then they're back on pc that's just what's gonna happen rather i would see a release spider-man 2 day one on pc sell a bunch of millions of copies and make a bunch of load of extra money instead of selling them a console or trying to sell them a console failing to do so in most instances and then if they do if the small portion does buy it they're buying one game two games max and then they're back on pc as well but that'll do it for me your thoughts down below no i went on a little bit long but i feel like hell divers 2 it's a very important game in terms of proving this uh, to PlayStation and uh, the consumer. Everybody involved. Everybody should be convinced that PlayStation PC games should be happening day one, in my humble opinion. And I know that's going to be the case with the Concords and the Fair Games of the World, but I'm talking beyond that. The Wolverines, the Spider-Man 3s, The Last of Us Part 3s, etc., etc. But again, your thoughts down below. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out. Hey, what's going on guys? Mush here again. Hope you enjoyed the video. As you guys might know, YouTube's notification system is sometimes a little bit wonky, even if you're subscribed to the channel. Maybe you're not abundantly aware that I uploaded a video to remedy that situation. Make sure you hit the bell notification button. This way, whenever I upload a new video and I try to upload as consistently as possible, you will be notified directly of the upload and you can watch it as soon as it goes live. I would really appreciate if you guys hit that button so you can stay up to date with all of the content I'm posting. But as always, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.